Welcome to the Pinch to Zoom podcast. I'm Stetson. And I'm Gabe. In this episode, we're talking about what it means to be an expert and how you can become an expert in whatever field. Wait, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the expert person at introducing what we're talking about. So what we're okay. talking about in this episode is how to be an expert in absolutely anything. Go out there to the world and say, I'm an expert. And also what it means to be an expert exactly. That's correct. We're talking about how to be a certified, verified expert. Yeah, certified, verified, and digified, because this is a digital content podcast. So you can be an on online epi- uh, online yeah. expert. Exactly. Uh, yeah, there's that famous podcast, The Armchair Expert, and he's an expert of armchairs, you know, Dax Shepard. So he Amazing. It, took that it, title for himself. It, you know, it really is for anyone, for anything. Yeah. But before we get into that, we're going to be talking about our quick news. You know, we can't get into the meat of the episode without getting to the news of the summer. It's August now, and news is slowing down a bit before we pick it up, uh, you know, for the fall releases with smartphones. But we are getting into quick news. So without further ado, let's start that. Quick news, quick news, quick news, quick news, quick news. Uh, Speaking of smartphones, Samsung Unpacked is coming up fast. August 7th was just announced, and they sent out invitations for the event. Stetson, what do we got coming up? Yeah, so this is a pretty huge event for Samsung. They stagger their oh, smartphone that a, that releases. Was a good, that was a good pun, because with what you got coming up here. Boom, right. What makes it a big event, so Samsung, they have their event uh, more in the spring. This is their one towards the fall, right before that holiday season. I, I guess it's like summer before fall. Big event. Why is it big? Galaxy Note 10. This is Samsung's big, big smartphone. Big smartphone. Yeah. F- fablet, as people call it sometimes. Um, and this this is actually an interesting game. So I was reading up on this, and you would think, all right, it's a phablet. This is a big phone. But Samsung decided they want to make it even bigger. What? Uh, no. Yeah, come r- on. R- yeah, rumors, rumors have it. We're going to be seeing the Galaxy Note 10. And the Galaxy Note Plus, or or is it the Max? Wow, or the they Pro? Just, they, everyone, they just love the to XL? add pluses to everything. Max, XL, whatever they want to add, they're going to add that just to make it seem cooler and jack up that price probably a little bit more. But honestly, I can't complain too much because as long as it's not as big of a failure as their Galaxy Fold, uh, then they're probably going to be fine. Yeah, these are actually really popular devices, especially with their, I want to say, more pro users. If, if you can use a phone professionally in a, in a pro... No, I, pro- I think you can, definitely, because the, the thing here, if you don't know what the Galaxy Note's biggest feature is, other than being big, is the fact that it actually has a stylus that you can slide into the phone, pull out, use it as a trigger for your camera to take a picture, or you can also use it to draw on the screen, and it's actually fairly responsive, maybe not as good as the Apple Pencil with the iPad Pro, but definitely up there as far as like, it's not just a dumb, stupid little stylus with the little, you know, little thing you can buy on Amazon for a buck or whatever, and it just works just something other than your finger. This one actually communicates with the smartphone so you can, you know, use it to point to stuff on the uh, screen, move your cursor along, stuff like that. Yeah, very helpful I found in the little bit of time that I've used that phone. I think Samsung does a good job adding unique uh, features and functionality to the S Pen. Uh, you know, you mentioned some of them like taking a picture. They also are really great for screenshots, annotating things, uh, taking quick notes. You can make a note right on the screen while the phone is still asleep. That's super convenient. And, you know, it is a bigger device. So you're getting a bigger battery and it's really made the Note 10 and the Note series are made to last all day be that business professional device for for business or for people who are just super into using phones. Yeah, pro users out always creating stuff, taking good pictures and maybe like trying to, you know, create content from their phone. I don't know why, but hey, for some people, that's what they do. Uh, Stetson, what do we expect with this new phone? Uh, So we're expecting it to basically be a Galaxy S10, but bigger with a few things uh, shuffled around. So we're taking that hole punch camera and we're just nudging it over to the center of the screen Uh, for those of you who may be unfamiliar the galaxy s10 has a camera that is situated in the top right hand corner the screen goes completely around it it's very off center it's kind of a weird experience using the device so samsung's 
gonna place that in the middle of it. Um, and that's, I mean, that's basically all I was seeing. We don't know too much about this. We're, we're getting that spec bump, the improvements. Yeah, probably, probably like a slightly better camera, you know, uh, slightly better battery life, hopefully. Maybe, you know, is it going to have 5G? That's the question, really, I think. I think it will. I think it makes sense to incorporate 5G into a more professional device. Um, but, you know, it was a limited edition. Like, there was a dedicated 5G Galaxy yeah, S10. The, the Galaxy S10 5G. Uh, so, that that would be interesting if six months difference and the more premium business type phone gets the 5G bump included or... It, maybe they release a Galaxy Note 10 5G version. And 5G Pro or, oh, or Plus. Gosh, it's just the naming is getting out of control. But yeah, we'll uh, most likely have a dedicated podcast to that whole Samsung Unpacked event where we're unpacking it and giving our snap reactions on anything and everything they release that day. So moving yeah. on, what, what else are we expecting to see at this event? Do I don't any- know. I don't have anything else. I'm not ex- I, was, I have very low expectations for Samsung, as you can tell. I'm thinking along with uh, addressing the business crowd who uh, sits in their suits all day, we're expecting to see the Galaxy Watch Active 2. Uh, this is basically Samsung's version of the Apple Watch, tracking your activity. We're expecting this to have LTE connectivity and a larger battery life. Um, we may also see the Galaxy Tab 6. This has already been announced, but you know Samsung could just have it on display. People can get more hands-on, more media attention. Um, And I think the big question mark is actually the Galaxy Fold. Like, will Samsung have an update? Will they have units on display? Um, Are they going to talk about it at all? Didn't they announce it was going to be going on sale uh, like later this month or the next month? Yeah, so I think you're right. They're heading heading towards that fall release. So they may have it, again, like the Galaxy Tab 6, just kind of on display for people to check out now that it's supposedly fixed. Yeah, that will be interesting to see. So stay tuned for that. Uh, If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe so you get a notification when we upload that podcast. And then you'll be in the know and you can say, hey, uh, guys, have you heard about the Note 10? And they'll have no idea. All your friends will be so jealous of you. Totally not think you're just a techie obsessed with technology and cell phones and stuff like that. I'm not speaking of personal experience. Yeah, not. Gabe, I don't, I don't, I don't think I know anyone like that actually. Yeah, no. Uh, but anyways, moving on in quick news, quick news, quick news, quick news. Okay, wait. So, Gabe, what are you going to be purchasing all this new Samsung gear with? Um, most likely, uh, I use uh, you know clamshells. Uh, I collect them, and so I'll probably, I, I think it's a thousand clamshells converts to one U.S. dollar. So, expecting the new smartphone, twelve hundred dollars. What's that? A little quick math, like. 1.2 billion million clamshells or was it 120,000 clamshells something like that yeah yeah that sounds about right okay so that should work that's probably what i'll use um i don't i don't know i mean is this i don't see how this really ties in with what we're going to talk about but i i mean i was just you don't use like a credit card or something when you make oh per- oh yeah uh, i also pay with apples sometimes uh so i'll use my apple card oh wait i get where you're going with this okay yeah the apple just actually announced uh when they announced their earnings uh report for this last quarter they announced that the apple card that they said was coming out in the summer is actually finally going to be coming out sometime this august so yay apple you uh, kind of well it's not actually out yet so i'm not going to give you an applause yet but you kind of hit your deadline of releasing a product after air power failed yeah i mean air power was a dud i'm excited for apple card we you know we talked about it in previous episodes is this something you're going to be getting most likely yes but honestly i i don't know i have three credit cards four four credit cards now i think and that's really probably enough actually five if you count i have a best buy credit card that i rarely use but it kind of is like at a certain point, it just gets a little like oh, too much work really to keep up with uh, all the different credit cards. I know there are apps I use in power and clarity to make sure I'm on top of all of my balances and pay them off pretty quickly. But it's still it's like at a certain point, there's no real benefits to having one card over the other and having both is just like, why even bother? It's just more temptation. So most likely not. And a lot of people, I think, who were interested in it might be not getting it as well because apple just announced that they're not going to be supporting the purchase of bitcoin with the apple card so that's just an interesting step that apple took 
not really the hugest news, but a lot of people in the Bitcoin community are pretty upset because it shows that Apple is not on board with cryptocurrencies. That is a fascinating tidbit. That's something I hadn't heard. Fortunately, there are many other ways to go about purchasing cryptocurrencies. Um, and, you know, you do make a good point. You can't have too many credit cards. I think I'm definitely going to pick it up. I mean, just think about all the video content you can create about it. Um, right. That's that's how you justify. That's every... how you justify everything. Yeah, yep, that's when you're a creator it's a business expense or it's a Boom. business use. But yeah, so that'll be coming up in August. So keep an eye out for that. If you've gone to their website, they have a landing page there. Uh, so if you want to be updated as soon as it's released, I think that you can put in your email and they'll shoot you a little promo email when the card is actually available for signing up. So I'm awesome. signed up for that. I'm ready for it. Yeah, I am too. I signed up with 20 different email addresses. So my email address, my inbox will just quit on my phone. I, I love it. I love in. it. And when the card, the Apple card shows up, we're going to capture the moment with the brand new camera, right? What camera? Uh, this is actually, you know, we just, it's so funny. Did we just Sony had, release an, the, the Sony released the A7S III Yes, I've been oh. dreaming about? Oh, oh. yes. Oh, man. Okay, so it is Sony a Sony. On the page. Yeah. yeah. Sony camera, but it's, yes. it's the RX100 what? Mark 7. No, no. Oh, ah. So Sony, what are you doing? They're, I feel like they're just trolling us at this point. You know, that's the third RX100 series camera that they've released since the release of the A7S II. This is getting out of control now. Sony, you have got to you've got to check yourself before you wreck yourself, Sony. I don't I am oh, my, I can't Stetson you talk for a moment. Just talk about anything. Okay, so Gabe is just standing up. Oh my god, he's leaving. Tables are being Oh my the window. Oh my god. Wow. Gabe is just he, All right, right so he's I'm back. I've taken out my anger. And this really isn't a huge update. Uh, the Sony RX100 Mark 7. It's, by the way, that's a VII for those who are keeping count. So really impossible to write about and copy and paste everywhere. But I know in the last episode we talked about Canon releasing their PowerShot G7X and G5X updates. Sony obviously saw that and said, okay, Canon, uh, we're not going to let you get away with updating your, your point and shoot line without adding a little bit to spice up our line. So the new RX100 Mark 7, gosh, that is such a long name, comes with some more autofocus points. I think you get 357 versus 315. It most notably, as it is a very powerful video camera, has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So external mics, hello, hello, good audio quality. And it also comes with the eye focus that we saw introduced in the A7R4. So that's some pro features you're getting in a camera that retails for $1,200 and can fit in your pocket. That, I mean, that is a very expensive point and shoot camera. Do you think the RX100 lineup uh, delivers on this price tag? Like, like it's how really, it's really debatable. I mean, for the same price, you can get a very good, you know, A7, uh, a two, I think, is that what it is? I don't know. You can, but you can start getting mir mirrorless cameras. I mean, the EOS RP from Canon goes. That's a full frame camera. Granted, it crops in, but still full frame camera, mirrorless. Uh, you got to buy a lens for it, but still twelve hundred dollars for the camera body. So really, it's only if you need that compact size and portability of a point and shoot. But the good news is, with the release of this, it's shipping on August sixteenth. Uh, they're also going to be a most likely marking down the prices of all the previous versions of the RX100 line. So that means the RX100 Mark VI and Mark V, which are pretty close spec-wise, honestly, not huge bumps in either of them. You can pick up for cheaper prices that are more competitive with the Canon uh, line. So under a thousand. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's great for everyone. Pretty, pretty big win for consumers. And, um, you know, I guess that 12000 or excuse me, $1,200 price yeah, tag, that's 12, actually... 12000 for a point and shoot. <laughs> yeah, no way. No way. But the um, the Blackmagic camera, the... Uh, the Is that... What is it called? Yeah, the, Black... the Black Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I thought about that, and then I thought about the Osmo Pocket, and, and then it just didn't... Pocket just didn't seem like the right word for that camera. But it's it's a really professional camera, and it's also... Right around yeah, that twelve hundred dollars. So. Granted, no lens, but still, yeah, you can start 
getting twelve above a thousand dollars, you can start getting some pretty good cameras. So the point and shoots that are above it, really, you got to be wanting to really need that uh, point and shoot video quality. A lot of vloggers love this camera, especially with the addition of the three point five millimeter audio jack. I know, even though it hasn't shipped yet. If you Google it or check it out on YouTube for reviews, a lot of creators have been sent it from Sony to, you know, put up content and get some free advertising. Well, free, I guess they're sending them a camera, but, you know, that that sponsored content branded advertising. But, yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, Sony's obviously very popular with video creators, and we'll have to see how popular this camera is selling-wise. So, yeah. Absolutely. Happy to see it, but also, Sony, this is a warning. If you do not release your A7S three. By the end of this year, I might be jumping ship because that Sigma FP looks pretty enticing and Canon and Nikon and even, uh, what is that, uh, Panasonic are not sitting around and just resting on their laurels like you have been doing for the past four years with that S2. So mark my words, Sony, release the Mark III. Gabe is upset. Gabe, they came out with the A7 III. That All was right, pretty All right, we're good. moving on, Canon. Stetson, whatever your name is. I'm just too upset at this point. Uh, let's move so into some of, your, some of your wheelhouse zone. Verizon is announcing new cell phone plans, well, tomorrow, which is, what is that, August 5th? Because we're recording August, on the 4th today. August 5th, yeah. So um, probably by the time you're hearing this, Verizon's brand new cell phone plans are going to be out um, and, and this is going to be like a, a swing and a miss for a lot of people. This is like a big head scratch. Um, for those of you who may be unfamiliar, Verizon has four current plans out right now. Uh, they just introduced their quote unquote, just kids plan. And, um, that's an unlimited plan kind of for bringing kids onto your family plan. And then they had, I think it was like above unlimited and beyond unlimited Verizon just has so many unlimited plans. So to quickly break this down for you, All right. the new plans, get this. These are the names. Yep. Okay. You can start unlimited. Okay, good. I'm unlimited. All right. Play more unlimited. Wait, what? Do more unlimited. Okay. And get, get, I'm sorry, just get more unlimited. How can you get more unlimited than a limit? I just, unlimited? I just gave, you know, this is just one of those flabbergasting moments where you just really question what is going on. You thought the Samsung Galaxy S10 Pro Plus Max, whatever that's called, that was, these, these are ridiculous. These plans yeah, are ridiculous. they're getting out of control. Uh, do they still have any plans where you can buy? I know they used to have plans, you know, like you can buy three gigabytes per month. They're like small, medium, large plans or no? Yeah. So so the small, medium, large plans, I think those are still kicking around. Uh, those are not worth it to any capacity. Um, basically, I think the, the rates when I last checked was like the medium is two gigs. That's $50 a month. But then you pay an additional $30 a month or, or an additional $20 a month to get access to that. So then you're paying like $70 a month and that's that's the price point of like an unlimited plan. So yeah, yeah, they're always, they're always, I, the little time I worked at Best Buy on the cell phone department, it's always like they add so many hidden fees and everything to their prices because they're always trying to trick people into, you know, once they know once people are signed up to a cell phone plan, they're most likely not going to change it. So they're like, just get them signed up and then just start tacking on fees. And, yeah, these, these are, um definitely less than ideal it makes more sense for families where the price drops from uh, these plans start at seventy dollars a month go up to ninety dollars a month um, but when you get up to five people that's when the price drops to around thirty to forty dollars a person um, yeah and that's I think and I think it's the same with also if you have a business uh, and put multiple people on the uh, plan you get that lower rate which is yes definitely more affordable than seventy dollars to ninety dollars a line Absolutely. Um, otherwise, for individuals, uh, you may consider checking out someone like Visible or Reach Mobile. Uh, they use the Verizon network for coverage, and their plans are significantly more affordable. Yeah. Well, that's we'll keep an eye out for that. Maybe someone could be getting the new Samsung Note 10 on a Verizon plan. So all new stuff coming out in that aspect. But that's it really for quick news today. Quick news, quick news, quick news. Quick news. Uh, before we move on to our main subject, let's just take a quick break to talk about who we're not sponsored by. Uh, Stetson, I can't remember really who went first last time, but I think we'll have you go first today. 
uh because i think i won first but i'm not sure but so you got, are you ready today i think i'm ready today all right i got my uh timer shot clock up 30 seconds on the clock and and you ready yeah three two and we're off so i just talked about reach mobile reach mobile is a new kind of cell phone carrier giving back to communities and people in need basically the way it works is for every person who signs up for their service they give connectivity to a person in need this helps people who are farmers see weather forecasts helps people stay connected get job opportunities uh, reach mobile uses the verizon network for coverage so you are getting robust lte coverage across the united states their plans start at just $20 a month. Boom. That is actually really cool. I had never heard of Reach Mobile. I know I usually hear about all the stuff from you, but have you have you put a video up on that yet? Yeah, so um they're like brand new carrier, very different approach to the industry, you know, as I was talking about kind of donating cellular data to people in need. Um and they just sent me a SIM starter kit, so I'm going to be testing them out, and hopefully producing a review video in the next couple of weeks. Nice. So check that out on Stetson's channel to see if, you know, but beyond just the whole uh, good packaging of the company, if maybe they have some service that backs it up. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. I just opened my stopwatch and it was paused at 33 seconds, which means I had previously used it for this episode. All right, Gabe, we're getting 30 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? I'm ready. On your mark, get set begin all right this one's a little more somber but today i want to say that we're not sponsored by the king of random grant thompson uh if you haven't heard uh he was this youtuber who passed away recently on july 29th 2019 he was th only 38 years old and left behind a wife and four kids uh, his youtube channel the kingdom random you know they had 2.5 billion views all educational stuff about gummy legos life hacks homemade rocket science really making it science educational and fun uh, and i know i'm over my 30 seconds but i just want to say the post that they put up said please do a random act of love or kindness today in the honor of king of random uh so yeah i just want to leave people with that do something nice for someone uh you know do something good and uh, because we never know how long we're gonna have on this earth and this is some guy who really made a huge impact on a lot of people's lives and yeah he's gonna be missed Wow, that, that is kind of sad. I, I did not know that. Um, but, it, you know, it sounds like he did have a, a you know positive impact and was able to grow a really great community. And that's something I love to see on YouTube. And it's amazing how the platform can bring people together. Yeah, I mean, I didn't watch a lot of his videos, but I know I always saw a couple pop up now and then in my, you know, the trending page. And I remember back in high school, a couple of times when I was doing science projects, I used his videos as like inspiration to like, you know, you know, build something or you know design something or do some research or stuff like that basically make something amazing yeah that's i mean that's that's we we don't know how long we have on this earth and it's amazing to see people who in only 38 years he's changed the lives possibly of millions of millions of people uh and i mean granted it would have been awesome if he'd been around longer but you know he went out the way he lived he went out randomly just like that in a paragliding accident so crazy uh, RIP, check out his channel. Uh, his videos are all still up there and they're still just as amazing and fun and entertaining as they always were. And yeah. Have would Gabe, would you consider him to be an expert? That is a very good... I would definitely consider him to be an expert, actually. And the interesting thing is uh, he... I don't think... I don't know much about him, but I'm pretty sure he was an airline pilot and, you know, stuff... You know, he wasn't like a scientist or, you know... Like, I know Mark Rober, who is another um, YouTuber. Did I pronounce his name wrong? No, no, no. That's how okay, I say it. I got it, it right. All right. Uh, and he's another YouTuber. He's like a NASA scientist, and he makes more like scientific videos and like building cool things and testing stuff out. So that's kind of like he has that qualification badge. But, you know, Grant Thompson was just, a, I think, an airline pilot. And then he just said, hey, you know, I like doing these cool projects and stuff like that. Let me make videos on them. And they started to get some success. And then he just turned it into his thing and he was definitely an expert on it so so you know that's a really fascinating story like people basically sharing their creativity on youtube and um you can really build an audience and kind of uh develop your i want to say authority and reputation on a subject what what do you think makes an expert um and especially one online like how uh, do you verified 
That's all it is. That's it. You got, so you got you that just... blue check mark on Twitter. Carte blanche. You are good to go. Talk about whatever you want. If you see someone with a blue check mark tweeting something out, you know, whatever they're tweeting, that's the gospel. That is 100% verified truth. And yeah, same thing with Instagram and YouTube. If they're verified, you can basically take that to the bank. That is hard cash. That is, you know, concrete. You could build a skyscraper on that fax. Right? Well, you know, Gabe, you know, it's interesting someone like you would say that because I noticed you're actually not verified on your accounts. What? What? Oh, gosh. Oh, oh, boy. Um, well, yeah, that is uh, that is awkward. So I guess you can't don't. Is that a warning to not take anything I say? Hey, I'm I'm your words, not mine. Your words, not mine. Okay. I'm just. Well, no, I, I, I was kind of kidding. And I think it's getting into a little bit of what we're seeing as an issue in today's online world is that really the online platforms that we have, be it, you know, websites with a blog or social media or more content driven sites like YouTube, you know, and Instagram, really they lend themselves to just giving a soapbox and an an expert badge to anyone because the way we often judge experts beyond just like qualifications, you know, oh, I graduated from this school. Oh, I worked this job. Oh, you know, is how many people are paying attention to them. So if you see someone with, you know, 10,000 retweets and, you know, 20,000 likes on a tweet and you, you read that tweet and you go, oh, this must be true because this person tweeted it and a lot of people are paying attention to it. So that's, I think, the issue that we're seeing today is that it's really this kind of mass just, you know, social uh, qualification and verification of experts where there's not as much you know, actual back to back it up necessarily. I completely agree. And that's a really good point. I notice sometimes just when I'm on YouTube, I will choose to watch the videos that have more views because in my mind, more people have seen it. That means it's probably better. It's got better information. It's more along the lines of what I'm looking for. Um, But sometimes the videos with fewer views are actually higher quality. Um, You kind of stumble across them by accident, Um, but, but they really deliver Uh, a better experience and you know you do bring up a good point where this is kind of how fake news can spread so quickly where one person that has a large following and may be perceived as a quote-unquote expert can say something it can be incorrect or misleading and that can actually spread just super quickly based on their audience following um, and cause that information to be uh, kind of accepted as true without any kind of real verification yeah i totally agree there it uh is definitely a responsibility that a lot of large creators are going to have to face you know that if they're given this quote-unquote expert status you know because of their large following you have to then be a little more careful and you know verify all the things you say check and make sure that you're not putting out misleading things because you can then abuse your you know expert um you know this pedestal that you've been given uh, to be raised up above the average human being online. And I, I mean, I, I write uh, for my website, and you have a website too. Uh, I have digital tech reviews and tips.com. You have best cell phone plans.net or dot com. Right? Uh, we're a dot net right now. The dot com oh, okay. is a little bit out of my budget. Yikes. All right. Well, maybe one day. Uh, but, anyways, what I was going to say is when I often write articles, uh, there's this, you know, I can, I hedge my bets sometimes cause I'm like, I'm not a hundred percent sure on this. So I'll put like, you know, all right, this, this camera felt like it was slightly not as good or, you know, the focus seemed a little slower and like, I don't want to go out and necessarily say something, but then I'd go see, you know, Forbes or some of these other sites out there, you know, news shooter, uh, similar tech review sites. And they're just saying like the most crazy outlandish things because in today's world, it's better to and it, or it's not better, but it gets more attention when you, you know, really put your stake down in the sand and say, this camera is the absolute worst. Don't buy it. Ignore it at all costs. Run away. You know, that will get more attention or even say this camera is the best camera. Sell all your other cameras. Doing stuff like that gets more clicks and more attention than if you just kind of, you know, say, all right, well, it's a little bit better and, you know, give a little more nuanced approach. If you just go out there and say you're an expert and boldly proclaim facts as if they're facts or not facts, I guess opinions as if they're facts, then people think they're true and they pay attention to you. Do you consider those strongly opinionated people writing those articles for Forbes or or other 
websites, do you consider them to be experts? Well, it, it's an interesting thing because they might not have originally been experts. You know, for example, like I is who, how are you an expert ever? You know, do you, other than receiving some external verification, uh, I really think that it, a lot of it is through experience, like the EX and expert, that's the experience part that you're gaining. You know, you have to level up, uh, like you're in, for example, playing a video game, you know, level up your character until your character reaches that expert class. And it's just how the external world and people around you are able to tell that you've reached that expert level. Oftentimes that could be, you know, like I said, something, you know, that's abs- that's abstract, like, or not really abstract, but some other institution, like a college uh, company that you worked at, uh, some big projects you worked on, or it could just be seeing, hey, this person has uploaded 700 videos to their YouTube account. You know, I think they probably know what they're doing on this subject, or they've been, you know, uploading videos for, or creating blog posts for this long, you know, taking this many pictures, uh, stuff like that, that shows really your body of work and how you've really put in time and effort to really perfect it. Because you can learn from a person and go to a classes, or you can just do stuff. And we're, as natural human beings, we're built to learn and, you know, refine our processes. Are, are you sure it's not the XP in expert that stands for experience? Oh, gosh, that is... Boom, shopping cart oh, rolling no. my way. Oh, um, my gosh. You know, you bring up some good points. I, I actually, so my take is this. I view the writers as experts, but yep. not on the information they're writing about. I think they're experts on getting high traffic, generating clicks, building revenue, trying to build an online business. And their expertise is just kind of getting that sensationalized title, getting that traffic, um, and, and getting getting the clicks. So it's, it's like a different goal that they have, but I could see them as being an expert in that. Clearly, it's working for some of them, and they are getting the clicks. Um, but I, you know, I think, I was wondering, like, what, what does make you an expert? I think, uh, you know, we joke about experience a little bit, but I think that that is one of the core elements. And, you know, I, I had some thoughts here where basically experts are people who continuously ask questions, they're always seeking to improve. They're always learning. And I I said as a last point, there are people who are sharing their knowledge. So I I don't think you can be considered an expert if you don't share your knowledge. This is this is a hot take. Interested to hear your thoughts on this. But in my mind, becoming an expert is not something you have control over. It's like a, a term that people will give to you. And in order for people to bestow this expert badge, um, you need to show them that you've earned it. And I, I think you do that by sharing your knowledge, showing that you're a reputable, reliable, knowledgeable source, um, and sharing your experiences with others to demonstrate your expert class. That is, that's definitely an interesting take. I I would use, you know, there's that common uh, like metaphor or, or I don't know what it is, but that if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? I would say if someone learns a skill, it becomes the best guitar player in the world in the middle of the forest and no one's around to hear them or learn from them, are they an expert, right? Right. So that is kind of interesting, but I also brings up to mind like the idea of like a guru, right? And someone who sits alone in like a hut and you go to for knowledge. So I guess in a way, yes, I actually agree with you because even though this person's all alone, they're considered a guru only because people seek them out and go to them to learn. You know, the person's considered an expert because people are going to them to learn. So I guess you could say that basically the only way for you to be an expert is to make sure that people are coming to you to learn. So yeah, if you start uploading videos to your YouTube channel, even if you only have, you know, 20 videos up, but if you're getting lots of views, lots of people are coming to you they're saying, oh, cool, awesome. Uh, and, you know, thanking you for your input on whatever subject you're t- talking to them about or educating them or making videos on, then, yeah, you're an expert then, arguably, even though you haven't been doing it for long or really haven't been, uh, you know, have other qualifications to be an expert in that field, you could still be an expert because you're reaching out to people and or putting content out and putting education out and people are learning from it. I think 
the uh, because I view expert as being something that is given to you or assigned to you, I think your expert status could could vary depending on, you know, who's receiving that information. And something that came to my mind is, for example, if, if you happen to, you know, be a younger sibling or have a younger sibling um, and like your older sibling uh, did something or had more experience and let's just say like playing Minecraft, then you could see them as an expert even though they may not know like half the things you could do in the game just because they have more knowledge than you uh you could you could just have a viewpoint that they are uh they, they're just an expert in your eyes so well yeah ex- expert is a relative term i think because yeah i'm you know someone might look up to me you know for you know someone who's just starting out in photography might go to my youtube channel and be like Oh wow! Thank you for all your tips on you know starting in photography or how to use this camera. But at the same time, I wouldn't really view myself as an expert next to you know maybe like a master photographer out there. You know like uh, what like Ken, what's his name? Ken Burns. No, that's he's a video. Well, he's a videographer. But you know, okay, fine. Let's talk video. Uh, you know, directors of films. You know, Steven Spielberg. You know, you you take any YouTube creator, put him next to them. I think most people would put the you know the director uh of you know of big movies ahead of someone who's just creating videos on youtube just because they had that little extra like verification of oh they're putting their stuff on big screens rather than online sure sure i can you know i can see that um who who are is someone that you like who are people you view as experts that you may be following you're hitting me with the random question here and i have just have nothing for you. I mean, <laughs> blank. I mean, I mean, I guess experts are really people you look to for information. So it really varies on what I am looking for information on. You know, if one day I'm looking, you know, I was trying to learn a little guitar this past spring while I was, uh, you know, hobbled up with a broken ankle, and I was like, all right, let me just, you know, Google uh, simple chords and like stuff like that. And those people were experts to me. But you know, if I'm talking about maybe my YouTube pursuits and the video creation you know people like Casey Neistat or Marquez Brownlee are really people I look at as creators that are have you know a superior ability to me and I can learn stuff from I I agree with that I view Casey he I don't know if expert is the word I would use but but I think it, it depends what you're talking about are you talking about you know is he an expert you know cinematographer Okay, maybe not. He isn't. But is he an expert at creating videos, gathering an audience? Yes, you can definitely say that because he created over 800 in a row vlogging every day, which I tried vlogging for one week every day. And by the third day, I was like, I am done with this. I don't know what I'm going to film. My life is so boring. There's no way I can turn my life into something that's interesting. So really, in that aspect of just creating content that's interesting, uh, entertaining and engaging, yeah, he is certainly an expert in that regard. So, so then maybe everyone is an expert, and it just depends. Like they're just experts on different subject like, areas. Like, am I? I'm an expert on being me. Dang, Gabe, you got yeah, me right? there. You're an expert. So every, everyone's an expert on being themselves. I, you know, I'm going through an identity crisis right now. I'm actually unsure. I'm an expert at going. We'll have through to it. send. We'll have to send you to us. There's a specialty on how to be Stetson. Wow, thank you. But then how do, how do they then also, the interesting thing is they also, this is getting a little bit uh, meta here, but they also have self-help experts, right? People who can help you become the self that you want to be. So you have this idea of this is the sets and I am in your head, but maybe the sets in reality is different. And then you, you know, you read online blogs, go to a person, li- read a book, and that's how you can then attain that Stetson that you want to be. So maybe that's the Stetson expert is the one that you have built up in your mind. Whoa. Never thought about that. That's getting I think, deep, man. I think it kind of relates to like I think wh- the I think the I think the whoa <laughs> uh most excellent award, you know, from uh what's that Bill and Ted's most excellent adventure. I think that goes to me for this episode. Well done. Well yeah. done. Bringing that in a whole nother level. I think it kind of yeah. relates to how I was viewing experts though, because I was just thinking back to to high school. I'd be sitting in my AP bio class and I, in my eyes, I would view the professor as an expert on biology, right? I knew nothing. Here, here this guy is just, you know, smoothly breezing through all these complicated bio terms, talking about 
photosynthesis, energy, um, the Kelvin cycle, all, all these things. Um, so I, I perceived my teacher as an expert, but I would think the teacher would not perceive themselves as an expert, but someone who is rather still learning, still researching biology, um, and still but, finding... But possi possibly an expert in teaching biology, maybe, to high school. Yeah, so maybe, I mean, there's, there's the point. You can be an expert in something you may not expect, um, but, I, you know, based on this conversation, I would say everyone is an expert at something, and it just depends who they're presenting it to and how it's perceived. Yeah, I mean, that's that really is something that I think I probably, before even this kind of getting to this realization here in this conversation, I think I kind of used in my daily life because I am always trying to learn something from people. You know, every person I interact with, even if just it's a cashier, uh, you know, or a taxi driver, an Uber driver, you know, someone I'm just working with on a project briefly, I'm always trying to learn something from everyone because everyone does have their one thing that they're good about or a couple things that they're good about, you know, even if it's just based on their unique life experiences and how they've gone to their point you can somehow take what they have and learn something from it, hopefully. So you can make them an expert. Uh, okay, here's a question, though. But yes. what, what's, what's the line between um, like being knowledgeable or, or, yeah, what's the line between just being good at something versus... Is it, is it like if everyone's an expert, you know, like the syndrome from uh, Incredibles 1, the, the whole thing, if everyone's a superhero, then nobody's super or whatever. So if everyone's an expert then no one's an expert at all. And I think this circles right back to that verification badge again. You got to have that badge. You got to have that, get that blue check. Otherwise, get GTFO. Right. I'm not paying attention to myself. I don't even look at my own tweets because they're just might as well be, you know, piles of garbage <laughs> oh, on but, the Yeah, who said this? Uh-uh. Yeah. What is this? Delete that. Report of <laughs> spam. Fake news. What do you mean I can't unfollow? Yeah, yeah, I can unfollow yourself. Um, Gabe, do you do you consider yourself an expert on anything? I uh, I don't know. I don't, and I think honestly, this might come back to the whole learning from them because I don't really consider myself an expert on much, if anything. And I think there aren't many people out there who would really consider themselves experts in the field they are because most people are always, like you said, trying to learn, trying to expand their knowledge, trying to get better. So you're always looking up at someone else, looking towards some other expert, trying to reach towards that. And you don't really view yourself possibly as a quote unquote expert. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, in my eyes, you're an expert at audio editing because I'm absolutely mystified by um i just put it into a magic box and it comes out as the podcast that's all that happens wow see i knew you were an expert that's yeah. amazing i sold my soul to the devil for audio editing of a podcast that was a really bad deal i was in i was in a dark place <laughs> i just needed to get the podcast up and i said all right come take my soul devil uh and maybe then this podcast will sound good i think it sounds incredible but what do you, do you view yourself as an expert in anything? I mean, I would say you're an expert in cell phone plans for sure, because yeah, that, that, that stuff be confusing. Yeah. And you've uh, broken them down and you know everything about them pretty much. I, you know, I would agree. I, and I don't, I don't want to like super promote my ego here, but I think well, what it okay, comes to, we're going to have it super promoting ego mode engaged. I, because basically what I've been doing is I've been trying to learn as much as possible about cell phone plans and then just share that with people because to your point, it's absolutely mystifying. The websites, you go to Verizon's website or Sprint's website, T-Mobile's website, garbage design. You can't compare anything, super confusing. So I'm just trying to gather all the information, present it in a visually appealing, easily understandable way. And I think... Um, just because I've been able to do this with some consistency and accuracy and, you know, people have seemed, seemed to like it that uh, I could be considered a quote, like an expert on that. So, yeah, yeah. I think anyone can really be an expert. I know uh, some of like I'll upload a video on one thing, get it'll get, you know, 2000 views. I'll upload a video on another thing that I really didn't even have any idea what I was talking about. Possibly, you know, maybe I just like, Hey, I kind of have an idea what GoPro accessories are the best ones. Like I haven't tested them all. So how am I an expert on this? I've tested maybe 
10 of them and I'm going to say these are all pretty good. So let me upload a video on that. And then like, you know, 400,000 views later, I'm like, all right, I guess there's a lot of people thinking that I'm, you know, the God of this. And like, I am the, you know, the, the best person to look for, for these accessories. I really had no idea, but you know, people are learning stuff from the video. So maybe I'm an expert on that for a little while. Oh yeah, absolutely. Know. Certified expert, GoPro yeah. accessory man, Gabe Shakur, <laughs> given the lowdown of the latest. But then, it, but then it's also taken away very quickly though, as you got to keep it up because I, you know, I haven't maybe paid as much attention recently to new GoPro accessories since I made that video. Like, what is that now? Like probably five years ago. So like back when the GoPro four was out. So now I maybe am not an expert on uh, what GoPro accessories are the best. I still have a lot of knowledge about that subject, but you know, I haven't had as much experience using GoPros uh, every day as I did back then. And yeah, as a, as a result, maybe I'm not an expert anymore and I've lost that verification. I, I like Straight that. I, away. I like that idea of fluidity and, you know, it does kind of sound like it, it resonates with our points where you may not be uh, seeking to improve your knowledge of GoPro accessories at this particular moment. You may not be sharing that knowledge because maybe you haven't gotten any new information. Um, and so that expert status can can sort of um, ebb and flow as as your career moves on. Yeah. And I think. Well, I think other than we've talked a lot about, you know, recognizing how to become an expert, but I think one thing that's very important now is really the ability for people to recognize whether or not people are experts and, you know, and even, okay, they're a source that a lot of people look to, but what are their qualifications? What is the, who's the person behind this? Right. And this comes down to a lot when you're talking about, you know, obviously fake news, you know, political stuff, news like that, but even just, you know, in, in the technology space, if you're looking at reviews and you're like, oh, has this, you know, is this person getting sent the product? Are they sponsored by this company? You know, are they really trying to push, you know, affiliate links a ton and just trying to, you know, say this product is the best, go buy it through the links here and give me some money. You know, that is really essential to look at because otherwise you can be, you know, lied to from here to next Tuesday and not have any idea what's going on because you think you're looking at an expert and it's really someone that, you know, maybe they work for Sony and that Sony's having them post up a review or something like that. Like a paid expert. Yeah, exactly. You have to, yeah, just find out who the expert is and why they're an expert. And that, that will go a long ways to, you know, making sure that you don't repeat stuff that might not be the truest thing uh, or that most accurate. I agree. I think I've brought this up on previous episodes. Somehow this particular moment really just stood out in my mind when Dyson announced the V10 vacuum cleaner. They sponsored. Yeah, is, uh, you're going to see how many times you can bring this up for different things, but continue. They sponsored pretty much every tech reviewer on YouTube. And you would have thought this vacuum cleaner was just the absolute greatest thing in the world. Greatest thing since sliced bread. This thing is basically, it's got superpowers. It's going to make you heroic. You're going to be cleaning your house. It's going to be spotless. Um, and, you know, really these people were just, they were getting their paycheck. Like they weren't really evaluating the vacuum cleaner uh, to its fullest potential. And I know a lot, a lot of people are really into um, vacuum cleaner reviews. Um, but yeah, but well, I think, I think that that's a very good example actually, because if you just saw one of those reviews, you know, say you were subscribed to one of the creators who put out a video or one of the websites that reviewed that and you saw it and you're like, Oh wow, they're actually paying attention to this. So the fact that they're even paying attention to it at all means that it must be interesting and it's something I should look at. And then they're also giving it a good review. So there's two things that the expert status that they have achieved is being, you know, used to leverage and promote this to you. And if you don't realize that, you know, they're being sent this product, it's a huge mass marketing campaign by Dyson, then yeah, you're not going to know the whole backstory and you're going to think, I got to get this new Dyson 12 and it could really suck. I love that. That just, pun. Yeah, yeah, vacuum cleaner that puns. Pun, that was, just never they never roll gets, right up never get old never gets old absolutely really hilarious doesn't. yeah but yeah it's expert status today is very easily attained but also uh very easily uh taken away because you can very quickly sell, tell that someone actually isn't an expert when you do a little digging right i think there's a really good warren buffett quote on that uh, but you don't know what it is you just 
know that there's a quote by yeah Warren yeah Buffett. hang on uh w- yeah i have absolutely no idea typing furiously warren buffett quote, no, 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 expert possibly is that what he's it's querying in? reputation oh okay here we go here reputation, reputation quote uh, thank you it's right. probably, here probably here very, it's a synonym to expert i think quote by the way google we had an interesting discussion on this google now takes snippets of websites and puts them on the search result page so you don't have to click into the site to get the information you're looking for that is yeah. fascinating. Sucks for website websites because now they don't get any ad money and you're not going to click through their affiliate links. So Absolutely. RIP websites in general, but at the same point, Google needs websites to pull information from. So we're going to hit a wall eventually there. Anyways, what is the quote, quote that's in? Quote from Mr. Uh, Mr. Buffett here. It takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely definitely think that is totally true. Uh have you know, you have you've had twenty years to create a reputation. I, I think I am known across the internet as Stetson Doggett, so I, I I feel pretty confident with that reputation right now. Um one thing I was gonna also that brought up another uh I like another quote or another thing on experts I remember is this book called Milk by Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And he has the 10,000 hour rule. And basically that in any specific task, any, you know, subject, any, whatever it is, you have to put in 10,000 hours and then you can become considered an expert. So I like that. Kind of interesting to think about, you know, if you think, all right, I put in an hour a day uh, for, you know, if that's 350 days, all right, you know, okay, maybe a couple, you're gonna have to do a couple more hours a day to become an expert then. So let's say four hours a day, that's, uh, you know, what is that, 1,400 hours a year, then it's going to take you like maybe five, six years to become an expert in that field. Just doing some quick calculations. It takes about three and a half years to become an expert on sleep. Oh, because if you're putting in eight hours of sleep a night? Yep, there you go. Okay, well, that's good to know. So we're all experts by the age. And actually, you were getting more sleep when you're young. So you're actually probably experts by the age of like two and a half. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations to everyone out there. You are an expert on sleep and not eating too, probably by now and drinking water. You yeah, don't have drinking, to stand up. Mm-mm. But Walking, I, think, maybe. I think it also brings into this whole thing that we're talking about now it brings back that it's very relative. So the fact that everyone's had all these hours of sleep now it's the people who have really focused more time into learning about sleep and, you know, studying it and studying other people's sleep. Those people are the ones who are experts because everyone has this baseline of, you know, we all sleep. And then those other people are the ones who are experts because they've elevated themselves from the crowd by looking into it more and really pursuing the learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think... That's that's what I have for my expert knowledge on being an expert, which, you know, may or may not. I may not be verified in that, but... No, uh, we're verified. We're verified, bona fide, certified experts on being experts. So, thank you, guys. You can take this. Uh, if you anyone asks you how to be an expert, you can quote us exactly word for word because this is the gospel. This is the facts. And, yeah, no one can doubt us. Uh, and if they do... Uh, uh, please don't doubt us too much. Like, don't don't be too harsh, uh, and don't poke too many holes. Don't shine too bright of a light on what we've said because it's probably a couple holes here and there. So that wraps up this episode. Like Gabe said, share it with one friend who who you think you want to have them be. In, if you you're an expert. I got I got it. I'm I'm an expert at wrapping up the podcast and you know doing our outro. So share it with one person who wants to be an expert and. Oh, and wait oh oh no what? all right now you guys know the trick uh you know if you're subscribed subscribe uh if you're not, oh gosh i don't know what i'm saying even but thank you guys for listening to this podcast i think the wrap up for ch- today should actually be do a random act of kindness for someone you know do something nice for someone and yeah don't bother subscribing to our podcast if that random act of kindness is sharing this podcast with someone you know then maybe that's the random act of kindness but yeah Spread some love in the world, and that's it, pretty much. We'll we'll let you know when we hit our ten thousand hours of podcasting. Oh, that is going to be a long. Well, we got about an hour each one, so try not to try not to math it out. Yikes, that's going to be a long time. Uh, 
All right. But stay tuned for the Samsung Unpacked event coming up on August 7th. All right. Thanks for listening. I'm Gabe. And I'm Stetson. And I'm an expert. And I'm still learning. No, you're an expert on being Stetson, remember? Oh, yes. I'm an expert, too. All right. Bye. And an expert on negative toe uh, to heel drop ratio. Yeah, I wear uh, my toe shoes. They're, I think they're flat. Is, is it pronounced Vibram or? I Vibram. 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 So you're an expert on pronouncing that.